Thank you. Thank you so much, TJ. Good morning, Board of Commissioners and the citizens of Douglas County. First and foremost, happy, happy new year. We will call this January 4th, 2021 work session to order. And I hope everyone has had a happy and uh, exciting holiday season. Right, right. So that's the number I gave them, strictly social media. And I think that's the way they're going to Commissioner Mitchell, Commissioner Mitchell, if you could turn your mic off, I can hear you. Mute your mic. Thank you. Um, I will start the meeting with roll call. Uh, B BLC, please acknowledge your presence when I call your district and name. District 1, Commissioner Mitchell. Present accounted for. District 2, Commissioner Robinson. Present. District 3, Commissioner Carthen. Present. District 4, Commissioner Guider. Present. Chairman Jones, present. We all are present and accounted for this morning. Thank you so much, Board of Commissioners. Uh, Clerk, do we have public comment today? Do we have anyone sign up? Yes, ma'am. We had two individuals sign up. Um, the, before I give the names, um, I will just go over the um, instructions. Uh, we ask that, um, of course, you keep your phones muted. And if you're on Teams, keep your video off until you're called on to speak. When you're called on to speak, if you could restate your name and your subject matter for the record, and please keep your comments to under three minutes. When your time is up, I will ask you to wrap up your comments. So I'm going to start with Mr. LaVon Dixon. Mr. Dixon, are you on the line? He must not be on yet. Um, the next person was Miss Mr. Mark Zerpoli. Uh, uh, good morning. This is Mr. Dixon. Uh, I got in oh, about a minute okay. late. I'm not sh I'm not sure if someone was uh, trying to connect with me. Okay, Mr. Dixon, you can go ahead and begin. And just as a reminder, you have three minutes to to address the board. And uh, if you could um, just restate your name and your subject matter for the record, you can go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is LaVon Dixon. Uh, my subject matter is a waterfall issue uh, that's happening on my property. Uh, I've spoken to uh, uh, Chairman Jackson and also Vice uh, Vice Chair Mr. Robinson uh, from this standpoint. And this is a follow-up conversation or follow-up action uh, uh, to some past conversations that I've had with both uh, individuals. Uh, it was stated that some repairs was going to be done to the, to the roadway uh, or preliminary uh, findings associated with the repairs of the road where it's going to be done to kind of, uh, I guess, eliminate my ward issue uh, that's causing some flooding on my property. I wanted to see where the status of that is at uh, from the standpoint. I think it's been probably about four or five months since the initial conversation was had, uh, maybe a little longer. I was connected with someone by the name of Mr. Valentin. I think he's over the department that handles that on the Department of Roadways, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I did send out a couple of emails to him uh, specifically on that matter. Uh, haven't heard back from him on the subject matter as well. So I kind of want to get the status update to see if, first of all, if any legislation was approved for this action to take place uh, from that standpoint. If so, is there a targeted deadline for its completion date uh, for it to be done? Uh, and get an idea of where we're at with the project in itself. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Appreciate you coming in this morning, sharing uh, your concerns and also with the follow up. What I'm going to do, Mr. Dixon, I'm going to have our director Valentine to give you a call and give you an update. I know we did have a conversation about uh, repairing uh, the area in your, just, I guess, just adjacent to your uh, driveway, and that's what uh, he has committed to do. So I will have him follow up with you after this meeting and give you a, a timeline. And I appreciate you coming in this morning. All right, I appreciate y'all and look forward to hearing from you. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Clerk, you have the floor again. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Dixon. Uh, the next uh, individual we had sign up was Mr. Mark Zerpoli. Mr. Zerpoli, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, if you could just restate your name and your subject matter for the record and uh, you can begin. 
Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Martin Zerpoli, and I'm speaking on behalf of the residents of Carmen Hill Home Park, which is 626 Fish Horse Trail Road in Douglasville. Uh, just a few things. You know, we're made on need in the community, which is on uh, 2017. Mr. Zerpoli, could you speak up a little bit? Yes. Mr. Zerpoli, okay. speak up, please. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, when my you. roommate and I moved to the community in September 2017, we smelled sewer gas coming from the drain as one of the showers and also from the drain and laundry area. Uh, there was also another smell in the laundry area that we thought was mold. And after living with the smell for over three years, the maintenance man finally came to the home. He opened an access panel in the laundry area and we saw black mold on the inside of the wall as well as inside the wall behind the washing machine. Um, because I'm a cancer survivor and my cancer might have returned, I could not be around the mold, and we requested we move to a different mobile home. Uh, the regional manager, Ms. Rose Robertson, even offered us one month of free rent to be out of the park. Uh, after several requests, they're trying to move to a new mobile home. Uh, the conditions around the park are, are not that great. There are some residents who are experiencing awful mold conditions. Uh, one resident had clothing, shoes, and family pictures damaged by mold in her, in her closet. Uh, mm -hmm. One resident had mold so bad, she was offered the same uh, thing. One month free rent in order to move out of the park instead of moving to another mobile home. She decided to move out. Uh, there are also uh, some decks in the mobile home, that area that are not up to code. Uh, we were told they would be enlarged and made bigger or replaced, and that has never happened. Uh, one man even fell through the steps on his deck and had to be taken to the hospital. Uh, one resident had a problem in her place where she had a large hole in the bottom of her uh, cabinet in the master bathroom, her floor. And uh, when her cat came back after being lost, a, a possum followed her into the mobile home, actually. Uh, there was another resident who had raw sewage accumulating under the trailer because the plumbing was not connected properly. And another resident had water leaking through her ceiling. Uh, some other residents didn't have hot water or heat because uh, the regional manager, Ms. Rose Robinson, or the owner, Shane Robinson, just won't get them fixed. Uh, as a matter of fact, they just don't want to repair anything around here. Uh, the residents have spoken to the health department and the code enforcement department, no results. Uh, it's just my opinion that people shouldn't have to live this way. And as a matter of fact, the new office manager and uh, the new maintenance man are actually using their own money to take care of the repairs. Uh, one other item is uh, on September 1st, management sent us a notice to uh, stating that they would be adopting the Douglas County water and sewer rates. Now, I can understand adopting the water rates because we're on Douglas County water, but how can they charge sewer rates when Pine Lake has their own wastewater treatment plant? One example is a man who, who is disabled, lives by himself in a single wide mobile home, received a water bill in the amount of $210 and a sewer bill in the amount of $197. Uh, this is just, I, I don't see how that can be with one man living in a mobile home. And some residents are even charged more than that. And some of the residents think there must be price gouging going on. And I just ask the commissioners if they ever have time to come by the mobile home park, talk to the residents, look at the condition they're living in. And that's all, that's all we're asking. And thank you for allowing me to speak at today's meeting. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Zuckerberg. I believe that's your name. Thank you so much. That's what? Zuckerberg, I'm so sorry. Well, I didn't want to miss you. You can call me Mark. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Mark, what I'm going to do, uh, certainly it sounds like this is uh, that what you describe is related to public health uh, and environmental type issues. I will be contacting the public health. Uh, department here in Douglas County, uh, which is Cobb Douglas Public Health, and, and reach out to see what I can do to have someone come out and, and, and review and assess those conditions that you just described. So I will uh, okay. handle that immediately. And uh, Lisa, if you could get Mr. Uh, Mark's telephone number for me, and then uh, I will definitely be following up with him. And I appreciate you coming in this morning. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're so welcome. All right, Lisa. Mm-hmm. Commissioner well, Robinson. I yes. Well, where was that community at? Where I didn't, I it's couldn't a, hear it. I'm sorry. It's the Pine Lake Mobile Home Park, uh, 6266 North Shoals Road in Douglasville. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mark. 
appreciate you coming in and we will address it. Thank you. We will take this matter under advisement. Okay, Lisa, it's, we have anyone else? Uh, we, we did not have anyone else sign in, but I wanted to open it up to see if there were any citizens that were signed on that wanted to speak this morning. Is there anyone wanting to speak? Okay, Chairman, um, I'll turn it back over to you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Clerk. Board of Commissioners, we're going to move right into our meeting agenda. Uh, you have the approval of the minutes. Please take a look at those minutes tomorrow or today and then be prepared to approve accordingly tomorrow. We'll move right into our business items. We'll dive into tab number five, which is authorization to approve a juvenile court attorney contract with James ooh, Anna Nosteskis to replace the attorney contract with Lisa Johnson and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Judge Harrison, I just uh, butchered James' last, uh, last name, but if you could please uh, chime in and let us know what this is all about. Yes. Well, first of all, it's an Agnes Dacus. You were very close. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we just call him James A. sometimes. So, um, well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for this opportunity. What we are asking is, um, as you all know, our um, attorneys that um, – get dependency cases in juvenile court or under contracts as opposed to um, billing by the hour. And uh, we had one attorney uh, not renew her contract with us. And this is a replacement attorney um, who regularly practices in our court. So it's just a changing of, of the individuals. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, George Harrison. It sounds budget neut neutral. Board of Commissioners, yes. any comments? Any comments from the board? Okay. We're going to move on to tab number six, authorization to approve a change order. Thank you so much, Judge Har Harrison. Thank you. Uh -huh. Tab number six, authorization to approve a change order with Georgia Power for the lighting uh, installation at Liberty Road at uh, I-20 ramp with no additional funds required and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Uh, Terry Gable. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Uh, uh, this first change order um, is in phase one of our, our lighting project on the interstate. Um, it was originally assigned to Greystone, and they they reviewed it and had determined that it was not cost effective. It was not in their air area, so it was, we uh, we moved it over to Georgia Power. Um, so the change order will be for that to sign all related documents for it, and there will be no additional funding at this at this time for the change order. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the board? Yes. Uh huh. Commissioner Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Terry, good morning and happy New Year to you. Thank you. Quick, quick question. So, what does it mean to not be cost effective? And that's and, and maybe backing up from that question is. Um, who determines and what determines which service provider um, gets the business? In other words, Greystone versus Georgia Power. And, and how did this arbitrarily, I mean, how, how does that work? I mean, in other words, well, I thought this was your assigned area and it, it's like, well, I don't want to do it anymore. And it gets thrown over the wall. I mean, help me understand, help the public understand what you're really saying. How, how, do, how do we get to this place? And secondly, um, it sounds like, I mean, we're moving forward. It's okay, but why was it cost ineffective? I'm, I don't understand. Yes, sir. It, um, when I had talked to Greystone, uh, the location of their lines, um, and where they were located in that area, uh, it would have been their price that they originally quoted would have been much higher, uh, to go out there and actually make the changes that would have been necessary. They, I didn't ask him point blank if they could service that area. It was just it was just the cost that it was going to take to uh, to do the installation um, from what they originally quoted. It would have doubled at least doubled the price um, on the on the installation cost. Is what the uh, response was I got back from Greystone. All right, so uh, perhaps a miss scoping, um, yes. uh, 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 an estimation plus or minus. All right, all right. 
I, I yield the floor, Madam Chair. Thank you, Chair. That's that's good enough. I don't have to go any further. Thank you. Okay. okay. Any other questions from the board? All right, I'm gonna move on to tab number seven, authorization to approve a change order with Georgia Power in the amount of $2,500 for the lighting installation at Highway 78 and Post Road intersection and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Terry Gable again. Uh, yes, this is in phase two of our lighting uh, projects. It's one of the intersections um, that Georgia Power, again, they went back and reviewed this uh, after they had quoted it and um, had determined that it was going to take more equipment than originally proposed. Um, so the cost increased, which generated the uh, the change order for us. Uh, the cost is, up, is now $2,500. And at this point right now, again, now there will be no additional um, cost to the project um, in the, uh, the total. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the board? All right, thank you so much, Mr. Gable. We're going to move on to tab number eight, authorization to accept the bid from Georgia Power in the amount of $9,100 for the installation of light poles at Fire Station 11, Highway 92, as recommended by the Fire and EMS Committee and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Deputy Chief Scott Zach Meyer. Yes, ma'am. This is a, a project that we're working on to uh, with the new highway coming in um, to help our fire trucks uh, make entry to the back of the building so we have to back in off the highway and also uh, included in the project is to swap our our septic over to sewer and build the parking area for our employees and this is uh, actually for Georgia Power to install the lighting in that parking area behind the fire station. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you thank so much. So much. Any questions yeah. from the board? Okay. Thank you so much. Pretty self-explanatory. We're going to move on to tab. Um, did I hear someone? I said thank you. I'm sorry. Oh, oh you're welcome, uh, Deputy Chief. I'm going to move on to tab number nine. Is authorization to renew agreement with the Comprehensive Program Services Incorporation, CPS, with the Douglas County Sheriff's Office for January 1st through December 31st, 2021, to provide enhanced security electronic services or service for all covered electronic systems at a total um, of $166,616 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Major Holmes, do you have the Good floor? morning, can you hear me? Good morning, mm -hmm. okay. we can hear you. Uh, all right, this is the uh, contract that uh, we use in relation to Black Creek, the, the company that uh, installed all of the electronics, cameras, and door locks in the jail uh, on this renewal. This amount, from what I understand from the chief, is roughly uh, about the same as the last 12 month contract. If you all remember Major, last year, Major, excuse me for a minute. If everyone could just mute the, your microphones, um, Major's getting some feedback. You can okay. you can begin. Okay, you can hear me good now. Um, the um, this is for the, the electronic locks and the when uh, excuse me the um, cameras and things for the jail through Black Creek. This contract, the last twelve month contract we did, this is roughly the same amount that that one was, according to what the chief told me. Um, if y'all remember last year, we actually tried to go into it. We went into a six month contract. We were actually looking to try to maybe change. Um, that didn't happen. So as it stands, we're, uh, we're going to do this 12 month contract and we're hopefully going to be able to address it sometime uh, this year. Um, my understanding is that the sheriff and them have talked and um, and with y'all are familiar about the replacement of this of the system at some point in time, but it's going to be very costly. So um, that's right now. This is kind of the the, the fix to keep our systems running uh, efficiently down here at the jail. You're muted. Thank you so much, Major Holmes. Any questions from the board? Madam Chair. All right, um, Commissioner Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Major, um, real quick question. Happy New Year to you as well as we come back. Um, how old is this contract with Bear Creek? 
Were they the original service providers? This is just context for where I'm going. How, how long have they been in there since the beginning? Yeah, it's Black Creek, and they were the system that was installed when we built the jail in 2010, 11. 2011. All right, so so Bear Creek, so so this contract is Black Creek. Black Creek, sorry, Bear Creek. Yes. My bad, Bear Creek. I, I get it. Sorry for the locals. Um, Black Creek. Um, all right, so you answered that question, which is, all right, they've been there from the beginning. When did mm -hmm. CPS take over? Um, because it's my understanding, please correct me if I'm wrong, is that um, Black Creek uh, provided a product to us. However, um, we required a little bit more um, supportive services along the way. In other words, here's a product, have at it. Uh, but we need a little bit more day-to-day -day, um, in what our needs were, which are important. I believe uh, local security, national security, I get it. Then they could provide. So therefore, we brought CPS um, um, in to take over that. Is that accurate for the sake of the moment um, that this, this group came in here? And so when did CPS get this contract to provide support services? Can you clarify that for us, please? If I'm not mistaken, I think it was done in either 2016 or 2017. We've we've had it about four or five years, I believe now. All right, uh, I'm looking for a five-year threshold. So I need to confirm um, where we stand with that. Um, so, Madam Chair, my ask is very simple. Um, I need the age of this contract as long as CPS has been there, and then based on that answer, I would have a different res I mean, a response, either continue on or perhaps a different course of action. Um, the reason I say that is that I'm, I'm listening to it's costly to do this, but yet we've got perhaps, I mean, is this the most efficient solution? It's security. Why are we kicking the can on something that, and I know we've talked about in last year's budget. I know we all have cleared our heads from, from that and so forth, but you brought this up. I mean, if this is sec local security, national security, if it's that important, why are we doing this Band-Aid solution? Just, just like, don't get me wrong. I appreciate the guys that's doing it. I, I get them. You guys know I, I support them 100%. But it's like, okay, guys, I thought this was security. I just wanted for the record. Madam Chair, you're the floor. Got to get off. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Or, okay. Thank you so much, um, Major Holmes. Will we I'm get gonna an leave. answer for that, Madam Chair? You'll get me the answer? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Lisa, if you could just make a note of that, we need to get the answers for the age of the contract so we can get the specific uh, specifics that uh, Commissioner Robinson just mentioned so we can get back to them tomorrow so we'll uh, determine whether this will remain on our consent agenda or not. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> okay. We're going to move on to tab number 10, authorization to approve change order number four in the amount of $13,483 with Summit Construction and Development LLC for construction of the Baker's Bridge Sweetwater Church High Point Doris Road intersection improvement and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Valentin. Yes, uh, good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Uh, this item uh, resulted once the uh, project was essentially completed, there was a final inspection and uh, it was conducted. Hmm. TJ, I believe we've lost him. Chairman, I believe his line dropped off. Yes, that's what I said. I believe we, his line dropped. Well, what I'll do, I'll just move on to tab number 13 because he has three items. At least I will allow um, Director Valentin to try to rejoin us. We're going to move on, Board of Commissioners, to tab number 13. 13 is authorization to purchase the approximately 4.453 uh, acres of land on Earl D. Lee Boulevard for the future site of the development uh, of the Department of Driver Services and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Legal department. Madam Chair, board members, uh, this is the CDL facility that y'all were investigating closing on. It's under contract subject to final approval in a public meeting tomorrow. Uh, as you are aware, the, the contract price is $600,000. 
which is below what was the appraisal based on reports. I think it's been tested. And Madam Chair, I'm not sure who the handoff occurred to, if James Worthington is involved in the handoff of this from Mr. Teal, but it's ready to close if y'all approve going forward with the closing. Okay, thank you so much. I believe James Worthington is on, on the line. He's been heavily involved with this purchase of the land, so he will be involved, can to ask, answer your question or to respond to your question. Okay, any questions? Uh, it, it, Madam Chair, if James is on the line, maybe he can confirm the latter on the environmental and the whatever testing they've done. I think title work has been completed, and it's just a matter of us authorizing closing, but James may want to weigh in if there's something I don't know. Okay, thank uh, you. James sure, Madam Chair. Hey, how are you doing? I'm great. How about you? Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Uh, thank you. Yes, uh, Ken, the environmental was done. Uh, nothing of any impact was found. Um, the report came back good as far as we're concerned. Um, everything looks good. Um, the driver services was involved in picking this site as well. So they're they're very much aware of this location. They're satisfied with it. So um, I'm open for any questions you may have. I'll, I'll do my best to try to answer them. <laughs> Madam, Chair, Madam Chair, one other thing, just to, as a, a reminder on this one, and if I don't know if Jennifer Hallman's available, but it seems like y'all are advanced funding this and then getting some money back. I don't know if she needs any other additional resolutions to recoup y'all's money, but we might want to ask her before y'all bless this. It seems like that has been brought up in the past, but I, I just want to make sure on this one because I'm not sure where Mark left it with y'all. Okay, thank you. Um, Jennifer Hallman, are you on the line? By any chance? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, as far as the reimbursement resolution, I believe that was something that was passed last year. Okay, thank you. All right, any questions for Jennifer? Before Madam Chair. She... Okay, um, Commissioner Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, um, good morning, happy new year, um, Director Hallman. Um, uh, question for you and it's not necessarily for you it's a broader question which is um, I heard the purchase price of it is actually six hundred thousand dollars all things being in um, I don't recall um, I, I was focused on other things during the budget process but uh, and I know we were aware of this um, is this dollar amount in the budget and if not that means we're going to amend uh, our budget accordingly to acknowledge this 600,000. Is that, I mean, help me understand where we are. And again, I know it's been a while, so um, there's plenty of room to clarify where we are with that. So was it in the budget that we just approved, the 2021, did we approve that as a line item, this 600,000? And if, if not, that means we've got to amend our fund balance, general fund to accommodate it. Help me understand what I'm looking at, please. Uh, yes, Commissioner Robinson, I had in my notes, I was going to have Lisa add the language and amend the budget so that um, even though it's going to be reimbursed through the reimbursement resolution, um, Lisa would need to still add it as and amend the budget. All right. So remind me again, we came in at what, 12 percent, 12 mil. I'm just trying to I'm, I'm I'm backing down the number so I know where my threshold is. So. What did we approve our budget on coming in and what will this take us down to remaining fund balance? Um, I'd have to go back and pull the spreadsheet. So if you'll give me a minute while y'all talk about something else, I can pull that in. But it, y'all were already at, um, I believe, 12, a little over 12%. Um, percent. So um, this will bring you down, um, but I'll have to pull my spreadsheet. Yeah, I need to, I won't belabor the moment. Let me stay in my lane financially. Um, can you get that answer for us and report back? I'm Director Hallman, Madam Chair, I yield the floor. We just want to clarify what this is for the record. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Jennifer, and also thank you so much, Commissioner Robinson. All right, uh, any other questions for Director Worthington or Director Hallman or our legal counsel? Okay, we're going to move on and um, Lisa, you have those, you made notations of the uh, items or the issues that Commissioner Robinson discussed, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, we'll just make sure we have that information available. 
for him. I'm hoping uh, Director Valentin has rejoined us. I'm here, Madam Chair. All right. Okay, you're back. I'm going to try you once again. Tab number 10, authorization to approve change order four in the amount of $13,483 with Summit Construction and Development, LLC, for construction of the Baker's Bridge Sweetwater Church High Point Doris Road intersection improvement and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Valentin. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. This, this item resulted from the final inspection on the project that was conducted jointly by uh, Douglas County and Polden County. It's intended to finalize addressing a drainage issue and uh, it should be the final uh, changes on this contract. Okay, any questions from the board? Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh, Commissioner Guider. Yes, uh, Director Valentin, did, did we not discuss this? Is this a different change order? Um, we had a, another change order uh, last year, the latter part of the year. Uh, yes, Commissioner, this is a, a different change order. Uh, it's a, a different uh, road that we're addressing, and the previous one uh, was done at the behest of Douglas County. This one is being done primarily at the behest of Poland County to address drainage at a different location. Okay, and Poland County is going to pay for half of this intersection. Um, that right. is correct. Uh, also, uh, the next two seems like they're um, repetitious too, but you're saying these, the the next two items coming up, they're also um, in addition to the ones we've already approved? Yes, they're, they're different items, uh, Commissioner. And this is uh, due to the final inspection, right? On, on the one uh, contract at Doris Road, it's the final inspection. On the other two contracts, it's ongoing, uh, addressing ongoing issues as they uh, come up on the project. Well, um, the intersection at John West and Bright Star is completed now, and it looks very good, I will say. <laughs> um, it was much needed, and uh, they did a good job, and they did it relatively fast, I think. But um, is this going to be the last change order for that intersection? That is our goal. All right. With that, I yield back. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner uh, Guider. All right, any other questions for Director Valentin on this particular topic, which is tab number 10? Okay, with that being said, I'm gonna move on to tab number 11, authorization to approve change order number two in the amount of $8,539.57 with El Selsor, um, which is construction LLC for construction of the John West and Bright Star intersection improvement project and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Valentin, you have the yes, floor thank again. You. Thank you, Madam mm -hmm. Chair. Th this item uh, is to address the uh, apron at the church. Initially, it was uh, designed as a standard um, residential type apron, and um, it, the, the church indicated that, uh, that the construction was more for commercial type um, access uh, because they have bigger vehicles coming in there. And so we had to address that with this change order. Okay. Any questions from the board? Okay. All right. We're going to move on to tab number 12 authorization to approve change order number two in the amount of $2,990.80 with CW Matthews Contract, uh, Contracting Company incorporation for the construction of the Maxim Road Congestion Mitigation Project, which is P1 number 0012621, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Valentin. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. This, this item resulted from uh, the ongoing construction of the uh, Maxim Road uh, uh, Project, and uh, it is to address a uh, slope uh, retaining wall uh, the, the actual measurements and the type of wall were changed to accommodate the field conditions. And so this, this change order uh, should address that item. And 
uh, <clears throat> to the question uh, posed previously um, by Commissioner Guider. Uh, whenever we present a change order, it is our hope that it's the last one on the project. But that, uh, this particular project is, uh, is early in the construction, so uh, our hope is that we won't have to come back again, but uh, it is very, very early in the process, and it's a rather substantial project as well. Okay. All right. Any questions from the board? Okay. Thank you so much, Director Valentin. It was pretty self-explanatory. All right, that was the last of our um, business item, uh, items for the commissioners. Uh, just you know, before I uh, yield to our legal uh, counsel to check regarding our executive session, are there any comments, any further comments from the board? Commissioner yes. Robinson. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, um, just one item I'd like to bring up um, for the board of commissioners. Uh, recently, we had a swearing in ceremony with um, both four new the elected individuals as well as those who were um, incumbents and i wish them all um, happy success in their next term or their, their term specific to that uh, madam chair directly to you i know that um madam um, superior court clerk had conversations with the administration regarding um what we call an operational audit not necessarily audit in the financial sense but what we call an operational assessment um, i've had a conversation i've had an opportunity to talk to both um, the new probate judge as well as the new DA. They both would like to have consideration for um, that body of work to be done for their offices. Uh, to the public, this is the same um, courtesy that we gave uh, Madam Chair coming into office. Um, you take over as an agency head, um, you, you want to have a baseline on well, where do I stand on certain things. If you recall, uh, we looked at um, obviously the coroner back then, we looked at um, the uh, bails bondsmen, we looked at drug forfeiture. Those were key areas that we thought um, at least um, Madam Chair, responsible for everything, um, um, should have looking at to coming into office. Um, we got that passed 5 0 bipartisan unanimous. I think the same courtesy should be given to um, these three new individuals coming in so they'll have a baseline. Um, I'll yield with that, Madam Chair. Um, again, I know it's something that we have to take it to the do the appropriate process, but they have asked um, as um, officers, obviously of the state, um, I think it's important that we acknowledge them and give them some type of support. But again, I have to yield to the full will of the board. Um, and I'll yield back now, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Robson. We definitely will yield to the full board. Uh, I believe that it's something that I've teed, it, uh, teed up already with uh, finance and uh, David Corbin and uh, Jennifer Hallman may have some instructions for us. They were beginning to just, I asked them to just evaluate the request. And I'm not sure, Jennifer, if you have any anything to add to what Commissioner Robson just stated. And then uh, certainly we are, I, th this will be the will of the full board. Yes, ma'am. Um, I believe when you brought it to our attention that the request had been made, um, we put it on the next finance committee agenda. Right, right. For discussion. Okay. All right, I just wanted that to be stated publicly that, that it is coming to the Finance Committee. And, All right. And Madam Chair, if you don't mind me answering Commissioner Robinson's question regarding the $600,000, <throat> excuse me, budget amendment, mm -hmm. um, what that would do, we ended our, how we adopted the 2021 budget was a 12.2% uh, fund balance of expenditures. Um, and so amending the budget 600,000 would bring our um, estimated um, fund balance percentage to 11.5. All right. Thank and you. Put that, and how much cash? Oh, uh, it's around 11.5. Oh, oh, 11.5, not 11.5%, 11.5 million. Got it. It's Thank actually you. both. It's both. Okay, that's around 11.4 million fund balance and 11.5% of expenditures. That's what I needed. Thank you, Director Hallman. Madam Chair, I'm good. Okay, thank you. All right, Attorney Bernard, and thank you so much, Jennifer. Uh, Attorney Bernard, do we need to go into executive session? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we need to go into executive session for personnel and litigation, um, and I will need uh, Director Fred Perry involved. Okay, thank you so much. 
Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? So we'll move. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. When I call you district, please indicate accordingly. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. Chairman, yes, we have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries to go into executive session. Um, TJ, would you provide instructions for us as we, as the Board of Commissioners uh, prepare to go into executive sessions, into executive session in six? Okay, Lisa. Okay. Yes, um, it has been, I'm sorry, TJ, it has been set up and once you all hang up, So uh, we'll hang up off of this call and then uh, uh, as per we've done in the past, we'll give you a call. So please leave your Microsoft Teams account up. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Director Perry. And um, citizens of Douglas County, the Board of Commissioners and I will return uh, momentarily. Thank you.